But the problem is that the SDA Church thinks that the Sabbath is binding on a Christian today because it's found in the Ten Commandments in the Law of Moses. Okay, this is the uh, second twisting of the Bible, the Law of Moses. My question is, did Moses write the Ten Commandments? If the answer is no, then we cannot say it was the Law of Moses because it is not the Law of Moses, it is the Law of God. And that's why Satan wants people to believe that the law is from Moses. No, God wrote the Ten Commandments, not Moses. God chose the stone, not Moses. All right? So understand this. This is not the law of Moses. Moses didn't write any Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, everything that Moses wrote, first thing first, Moses didn't write the, the moral law. Only God did. When Moses wrote the ceremonial law, it is according to what God told him to write. Moses didn't come up with with his own law. Hello friends, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to the again the Open Bear TV. And we are excited. Actually, I am excited to make another video. Um, and this is a response to again God need net because we have as seven Javanese, we have to clear things that are in the air because people think we are not Christian, but we are going to clear this out as well. So today I've been making videos now. Now this is my fifth video. So I'm not doing them in chronological order. I'm doing I'm doing them as God asked me to do them one by one. So let us get active with the video for right now. He's gonna talk about the second reason, which is the Sabbath. Let's see what he has to say. By the way, before we begin, don't forget to hit that like button on the way in and the subscribe button as you begin. And I'm gonna pause this because I don't wanna, I'm gonna pause it frequently because I wanna get each point as I had written in my note so I get every single point that he actually mentioned on this part. Let's get active. Two, the Sabbath. Adventists go to church on Saturday, not Sunday. Now, there's nothing wrong with that in and of itself, as Paul says in Romans 14. Okay, so first thing first, I want you guys to know something about the twisting of the Bible. Peter says, many people who are unlearned, they will use Paul's writing and twist it like they will twist the rest of the scriptures. Now, funny, I did not actually... Um, look for that verse for you, but let me actually do a quick Jesus lyrics. Um, I want to do a quick Jesus lyrics so I can find it for you guys. It's actually found in Second Peter chapter three. I kind of knew that. I don't know why I didn't just go there. I knew it was in Second Peter, but I didn't remember exactly what verse. So let me actually show you. What it says right here in Second Peter chapter 3, um, verse number 16, P Paul is talking about people who want to use, um, or Peter is talking about those who want to use um, Paul's writing. And he says this. Let me get that part right here for you. Make it bigger. Uh, not this one. Give me one second, guys. Make it bigger for you. There we go. Okay. So, Paul, Peter is speaking, says, Well, for beloved, um, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found in him peace without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord did salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, or also according to the wisdom, given unto him has written unto you as also in all his episodes speaking in them of things of these things in which are some things hard to be understood which they that are unlearned and unstable rest as they do also the other scriptures unto their own destruction so you're gonna find people that, that are resting meaning that are fighting against god's word and they will use paul's writing to justify their um, twisting of the word of God, but it will be done to their own destruction. That being said, 
he mentioned this that the he mentioned that he said this about the Sabbath or Paul says this about of as Paul says in Romans 14 as Paul says in Romans 14 so let's see what Paul is talking about in Romans 14 I'm gonna make that video as quickly as possible Romans chapter 14 is Paul talking about the Sabbath so the title is the title is do not pass judgment on one another so let's actually see what Paul talking about so here I'm gonna highlight some the, I'm, I'm gonna highlight the main words here him that is weak in the faith receive ye but not not to doubtful disputation for one believe that he may eat he may eat all things another who is weak eateth herbs let him not that eateth despise him that eateth not let him not let him and let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth right eateth for god hath received him who art thou that judgeth another man's servant to his own master he standeth or falleth yea he shall be holden up to up for god is also able to make him stand one man esteemeth one day above another another esteemeth every day alike let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind he that regardeth the day regardeth to the lord and he that regardeth not a day to the lord he doth not regard it he that eateth eateth to the lord and give it thanks and he that eateth not to the lord he eateth not for no one is no, for none of us liveth to himself, and no man dies to himself. So, so far, the one thing Paul has been talking about is food. He that eateth, he that eateth, he that the one one that is new to the faith, receive him because why? He is weak. So, because he is weak, he doesn't want to eat certain thing. Don't tell me he has to eat this. And that is what Paul is talking about. There is nothing about the Sabbath. First of all. There is no mention of the Sabbath. Everything is about eating. And then he says, you know what? If one man esteem to eat to esteem one day above another, and one man esteem every day alike, let him be fully persuaded in, in, in his own mind. So does that mean every day is now the Sabbath? No. God has created a one day and said it was holy and sanctified. The Sabbath, the seventh day of the week, but here in chapter fourteen, Paul is talking about eating. So let's not forget that part. But let's move on because we have other things to to do right now. Let's go ahead. But the problem is that the SDA Church thinks that the Sabbath is binding on a Christian today because it's found in the Ten Commandments in the Law of Moses. Okay. This is the uh, second twisting of the Bible, the law of Moses. My question is, did Moses write the Ten Commandments? If the answer is no, then we cannot say it was the law of Moses, because it is not the law of Moses, it is the law of God. And that's why Satan wants people to believe that the law is from Moses. No, God wrote the Ten Commandments, not Moses. God chose the stone, not Moses. Alright? So understand this. This is not the law of Moses. Moses didn't write any Ten Commandments. As a matter of fact, everything that Moses wrote, first thing first, Moses didn't write the, the moral law. Only God did. When Moses wrote the ceremonial law, it is according to what God told him to write. Moses didn't come up with, with his own law. No. God told him what to write. But when he came to the Ten Commandments, God himself, with his own finger, he wrote the Ten Commandments. So that has nothing to do with Moses, my friend. Let's keep on moving. But the New Testament makes clear that Christ fulfilled the law, and that as Christians, we're not under the law, we're under the law of Christ. Okay, Christ fulfilled the law. In Matthew chapter 5, verse number 17 to verse number 18, let's see what Jesus actually says about 
Matthew, in Matthew chapter 5, verses 17 through verse 20. You see, Christ fulfilled the law. That is true. But what does that mean? Think not that I come to destroy the law. First thing first, Jesus said clearly, I didn't come to destroy the law. So those of you like him that are saying, people like him that are saying, Christ came to fulfill the law, so you don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, you have to keep... Now, he, if Christ, Christ fulfilled the law, so that means we don't have to keep the Ten Commandments, right? But no, they will tell you, no, you don't have to keep the Sabbath. So the issue, they have an issue with God's Sabbath, not the law. They have an issue with God's Sabbath. But let's see what else he says. Or oh, the prophet, I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. For verily I say unto you, till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law, till all be fulfilled. Whosoever therefore shall break one of the least commandments, and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you that except your righteousness shall be shall exceed the righteousness of, of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of, of heaven. Let me tell you right now. Bible says, Whosoever shall break one of the least commandment, is the Sabbath part of it? Yes. Let's move on. I'm not going to go too deep right now because I want to keep it short. Let's move on. And the instructions on how we are to live are found in the New Testament. Plus, in the Old Testament, the Sabbath law was only for the Jewish people anyway, not for the rest of the nations. And okay, the Sabbath was only for the Jewish people, not for the, not for the rest of the nation. Is that true? That is such a lie. Because Exodus chapter 31, that he actually quoted, is what he wanted to, to, to quote, which we're going to go there real quick. We're going to go there real quick and see verse number 16. In verse 16, he says, No, God is speaking to the Israelites, right? About the Sabbath. So, he is talking to them. Okay? But then, when God gave that commandment to Moses, was it only relegated to the Israelites? Well, let's see what God says about that um, further down. Because just one text is not enough. Now here in chapter 31, it looks as though he, he actually only talking about only to the Israelites. But then, you know, as you keep on doing some more Jesus lyrics, I found out in Isaiah 56, that salvation is also for the foreigners, right? Salvation is also for the foreigners. And what was part of that salvation? Remember in Exodus chapter 31, in Exodus 31, let's go back over here. In Exodus 31, it says this about the, about the Sabbath, right? It says this, it says, It shall be, um, well, for the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath of the generation for a perpetual right, for a perpetual covenant. So the Sabbath was the Sabbath, the Sabbath was supposed to be a covenant between God and Israel, Israelites. But in Isaiah chapter fifty-six, Bible says that salvation is also for the foreigners. So what does it, what does that mean? Bible says, "Thus says the Lord." Keep ye judgment and the justice for my salvation is near to come and my righteousness to be revealed. Blessed is the man that doeth this and the son of man that layeth hold on it that keepeth the Sabbath from polluting it and keepeth his hand from doing any evil. Neither let the son of the stranger who is the stranger? The stranger is not an Israelite. It's a foreigner. It's the other nations. Let the, the son of the stranger that has joined himself to the Lord speak. All right? Speak saying, The Lord has utterly separated from his people. Neither let the eunuch say, Behold, I am the dry tree. For this is the Lord unto the eunuch that keep my Sabbath. Whose Sabbath is it? It is the Lord's Sabbath. And choose the thing that please me and take a hold of my covenant. What's the covenant? 
It is the same covenant that God gives to the Israelites. Even unto them will I give in mine house and within my walls a place and a name better than the sons and the daughters. I will give them an everlasting name that shall not be cut off. Also the sons of the strangers. Who again? The sons of the strangers that join themselves to the Lord to serve him and to love the name of the Lord to be his servant. Everyone that everyone that keepeth the Sabbath. So, was the Sabbath only for the Israelites? No, my friend. God gave the covenant to the Israelites so they can give to the world, but the Israelites, they kept it to themselves. Did you join yourself to the Lord? If you, if you need God in it, if you did join yourself to the Lord, you ought to keep God's Sabbath, not your own day of worship. But, Let's keep on moving. And the Sabbath wasn't about what day you had to go to church on, but the day the Jews had to rest from work. Ellen White considered that going to church on Saturday, Saturday would... Hold on. You said the Sabbath was not about going to church. Okay. If that is true, but then, if that is true, if it had nothing to do with going to church... Why why wouldn't Jesus break that rule? Because we know Jesus broke every rule, every, um, I would say, traditions. But when it comes to the Sabbath, the Bible says this in Luke chapter 4, verse 16. Verse 14, And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit in Galilee, and there went out a fame of him throughout the region round about him. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and end as his custom was. Custom. He went in the synagogue on the Sabbath day and day and stood up for to read. If the Sabbath day was not a day of church, Jesus wouldn't care about going to the synagogue to read the scriptures. Because Jesus broke every single tradition that the Jewish nation had put on the people, but the Sabbath. If he didn't break that rule of going to church on the Sabbath, or synagogue on the Sabbath back then, that means, that tells you, it is not just a day to rest from work. It is a day to have communion with God. He and God wants us to be in a body, the church, a body together to come as one. So need God net. I, I don't I don't know where you get your information, but you need to study your Bible better, my friend. You need to study your Bible diligently because this this is not good. But let's see what it has to say be the seal of God, while Sunday worship would be the mark of the beast, not what the Bible says. Okay, uh, I'm going to stop it right here because... So, Bible doesn't say Sunday is the mark of the beast. No, it doesn't say. If you're going to if you're gonna look for those words, you're not going to find it. But when you know who the beast is and what the, what the beast means, and you find out what the mark of that beast is, what they claim their mark is, you can find out that Sunday is definitely the mark of the beast. But I'll leave that up to you to study for yourself, to find out for yourself using the Bible, my friend. So, everybody else that are listening, thank you guys for watching the video. I want to keep it as quick and short as possible. Again, this is Jobin TV. I hope you guys enjoy this video. And don't forget to hit that like button on your way on your way out. And that, and, and that subscribe button as well. Again. Bye for now.